If you are someone who loves sports, then you are definitely going to love this idiom lesson. What's up everyone, my name's Wes. This is Interactive English, which is the place that you want to be to practice and improve your English skills. And the way that you are going to improve your skills today is by learning some new idioms. I'm going to teach you some idioms that are related to sports. That doesn't mean that you can only use these idioms when talking about sports. They can be used in a variety of different situations. And I'm gonna to talk to you about that today. And as I teach you these idioms and tell you the meaning, I'll give you some example sentences as well as show you some videos so you can see how these idioms are used in context. So let's begin. The first idiom is a tennis idiom and it is the ball is in your court. And what this means is that it is up to you. It is your responsibility to do something or to make a decision. The ball is in your court. So example, when, when you're playing tennis, you hit the ball to somebody else and then the ball is in their court. It's up to them to act. So this can be used in a variety of contexts. It could be used in business, in a negotiation. For example, maybe you make an offer to buy something and then you'd say, well, okay, here's my offer. The ball is in your court. It is your responsibility to make a decision now or tell me what you want to do. And we often use this idiom as just a standalone statement and you would tell somebody, you know, the ball is in your court now. It's up to you. The ball's in your court. Call me back if you want. Ball's in your court. <laughs> I said no, which me right back in the driver's seat. So the ball is in his court? The next idiom is to get off the hook. And if we're talking about hooks, you can probably guess that this is a fishing idiom. When you're fishing, you use a hook to catch the fish. So if the fish gets off the hook, then they are able to escape danger. They're able to escape punishment. And that's exactly what this idiom means. You are escaping responsibility for something that, that you are no longer responsible for this, this action that happened that was bad or wrong. You are no longer going to get punished for this thing. You are able to get off the hook. I don't have a choice. I guess I'm kind of hoping you'll come back over the rail and get me off the hook here. So for example, when I think of this idiom, because I'm a teacher, I, I think of students that when they don't do their homework and maybe there's a punishment and they're trying to think of an excuse, I might tell them and say, you know, you're, you're not gonna get off the hook that easy. You are not getting off the hook that easy, mister. And that is a common sentence in which you might hear this idiom being used that you would tell someone you're not going to get off the hook that easy, that you, you need to be held responsible for, for something that happens. You're not going to have it completely removed. You're gonna have to suffer the consequences a little bit. You're not gonna get off the hook that easy. Then we have a baseball idiom, go to bat for someone. To go to bat for someone means just to, to defend somebody. So in baseball, when you go to bat for another player, that, that you're basically helping that person out. They don't have to bat because you're going to do it for them. You're going to help that person. You are going to defend them. Just go to bat for them. I'm tired of going to bat for you and your show. I want to thank you for going to bat for me last week. Next is a hunting idiom, and this idiom is used quite often, and it is to give it your best shot. And often people would just say it as a sentence and just say, give it your best shot. And this means that you should just try your hardest, do your best. So when you're hunting, even though I'm not a hunter, you are shooting something and you want to give it your best shot. You tell people this all the time, whether they're doing sports or, or business, you would tell them and encourage them and say, give it your best shot. I'll go ahead and give it your best shot. Come on then, Nigel. Give you your best shot. Okay, O'Connor, give you your best shot. So for example, I would tell you guys this. If you're thinking that learning English is too difficult, I don't know if I could do it, I would encourage you and say, you know, give it your best shot. Just try your best. That's all that we're asking you do. Give it your best shot. Next is an idiom that comes from horse racing, and that is the home stretch. 
And if you're talking about the home stretch, you're talking about the end. So when talking about horse racing, at the end of the race, you might hear somebody say, the horses are coming down the home stretch. They're getting close to the end. And you can use this when you are getting close to the end of something specifically when you're about to complete something or finish something. So with this lesson, uh, I'm just about halfway through it. I'm not quite in the home stretch just yet. We're almost done, home stretch. This is the home stretch. All we gotta do is focus. Being tough, you're in the home stretch. Next is a golf idiom, and that is not up to par. So in golf, you, you have a score that you try to get for each hole, and if you match that score, then that would be par. So that's your the average score, that's what you want to do. If somebody's not up to par, then that just means that they're not good enough to do a, a job or a position, and you, you just don't have the skills or abilities to do something, and somebody might say, you know, uh, yeah, it's, you know, this work, it, it's not up to par. So if I'm not up to uh, par performance-wise... Jim. This isn't exactly a turn on. There's a thing called Proposition 48. It says that if your grades aren't up to par, you can take the SAT. If you score 700 or more, you can get into college. I hope these video lessons are, are definitely up to par for, for you guys. I hope so. Next is a boxing idiom, to throw in the towel. And in boxing, if somebody throws in the towel, then that just means they give up the match is over. And that's exactly what it means to give up something. So if you're tired of doing something, you don't want to do it anymore, you'd say, you know, I'm, I'm just going to throw in the towel. I'm done. I give up. Or you might hear it being used that somebody's, you know, they're trying to encourage you and tell you not to give up. And they'd say, don't throw in the towel. Don't throw in the towel just yet. Keep going. Keep working hard. They're throwing in the towel. He says, once the debts are paid, there won't be too much left. Round after round. I kept getting Frankie to patch me up. He's talking about throwing in the towel, but he ain't my manager. He can't throw in nothing. Maybe it's time to throw in the towel. If you guys are thinking, you know, I I'm done learning English. It's too difficult. I don't want to do it. I would tell you, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel just yet. And I'm not going to let you off the hook that easy. I'm always going to encourage you and tell you to keep going and give it your best shot. <laughs> And I'm just gonna keep using these idioms over and over so that you'll remember them. Let's just keep going. We're coming down the home stretch, which means we're getting close to the end, but don't leave just yet. I have some more great idioms for you. And this next one is a football idiom. It's an American football idiom. And I'm sure some of you might be rolling your eyes like, oh, American football. <laughs> Nobody watches that. But this idiom is a good one and it is blindsided. And if somebody is blindsided, it just means that they did not see something coming. They did not expect this thing to happen. You were blindsided by something. So for example, somebody might tell you some news that is shocking, like, oh, they're getting a divorce. You're like, oh my goodness, I, I was just blindsided by this. It's like you were as blindsided by this as I was. I can't believe she blindsided me like this, being so nice and, and friendly to my face. So when you're blindsided, it's not really a good thing. It's something that you weren't expecting and you would be blindsided by by something. So we often use it with the preposition by. I was blindsided by this thing that was not good and I was surprised. I was blindsided. Then we have a basketball idiom, slam dunk. This is probably a, a phrase that you've heard before, especially if you're a basketball fan. In basketball, a slam dunk is when you take the ball and you slam it and hang on to the rim. Yeah, I, I can't slam dunk the basketball. I can't jump. So if something is a slam dunk, then it just means it's a sure thing. It's easy to do, it's easy to accomplish. You know that you're gonna do this thing and you say, well, you know, it's a slam dunk. So you're watching this video right now and I'm thinking like, hmm, I wonder if they're gonna hit that like button, but I know, you know, it's a slam dunk. It's a sure thing. You're gonna hit that like button, right? Unless you think this lesson's not up to par. It's a slam dunk. I hope it's a real slam dunk. To me, this decision is a slam dunk. The next idiom is call the shots. This is a billiards idiom because when you're playing billiards, you, you often have to call your shots and point to the pocket where you want to shoot the ball. So if somebody calls the shots, 
It, it just means they are making the decisions. You might often hear this idiom in business because there, there's a hierarchy of people from the boss, the manager, and then you, and, and your boss would call the shots. They would be making the decisions. I call the shots, I do what I want to do. So you're calling the shots now, huh? I'm just gonna see nothing but the bench this year. You ain't calling the shots, you'll play. So I'm a bit curious if you knew some of these idioms already. I hope that you weren't completely blindsided by these idioms, and I hope that you can go on to use them and try to use them and give it your best shot. But because this is interactive English, I have a bonus idiom for you, and this is going to be a question, and I want you to click on the correct answer. Before I ask you this question and you go off to another video, I want you to hit that like button if you enjoyed learning these idioms. So, are you ready? Are you ready for your bonus idiom? What does it mean to hit below the belt? What, what do you think? Click on the correct meaning. If something is below the belt, it's a martial arts idiom. What, what do you think it means? If you don't know, please don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Just, just choose one. Give it your best shot. Which one do you think it means? Click on the correct answer or the video is just going to end.